Welcome to part three of my five-part video series, where I compare the five U.S. companies approved by the DOD. This week, Teal. Before I start, let me give you another interesting statistic. Now, prior to each of these recent videos, I contacted the drone companies. In the case of Parrot, I had a direct email to a guy in Miami. The other two companies, I went to their contact page, figuring that's where a potential buyer would go. And I told them what I was doing, starting this five-part series, comparing the drones, and did they have any more updated information on what appears on their website? You know, specifications, how they differ from the others, anything that would help my viewers. And how many do you think responded to me? Exactly zero responded to me. Now, I'm not a big channel, don't have a lot of followers, but you would think any company that's trying to compete with DJI is going to do anything they can to get the word out. And I was really disappointed in that because I assumed that by going with U.S. manufacturers, there might be a higher level of interest among you guys as well as the manufacturers to get the word out. But nothing, not a single word. So I'll send emails to Skydio and to Vantage Robotics which are the last two we have to do here, and see if they respond. And I'll keep you updated. So what about Teal? Well, they've introduced something called the Golden Eagle, and that's what's designated for the DOD and for commercial use. The company itself was founded in 2014 by a junior in high school. Pretty incredible story. And he's built it up over time. His first drones were the Teal 1 and the Teal Sport, which did fairly well, but he really hit his stride with this Golden Eagle. So let's talk about it. Again, I'm not going to do a review of it, mainly because it's really hard to even find these. And we're going to look at the basic specs, which are also kind of difficult to find. But I think I've come up with a pretty good list for you. It's considered a tactical quadcopter. It's foldable. But the one thing the CEO made clear, which is important to me, was its modularity. And the way he explained it was, is that you can either replace or upgrade parts in seconds without special tools. Now that to me is a big deal because number one, repairing is good, but if it allows you to upgrade it over time without buying a brand new drone, that's a pretty important deal for me. Less than two minutes setup, weighs about two pounds, has a combination of 4K camera, and they're now using the Hadron FLIR camera, which is a 4K coupled with a Boson thermal camera. So similar to the other ones. It too is ruggedized, high quality, and an IP53 rating. It currently has a 30 minute flight time, but they're looking at an endurance package, which is gonna bump that up to about 50 minutes. So that's pretty cool. 50 mile an hour top speed, much faster than the other ones. Can handle up to 30 plus mile an hour sustained wind speeds, has a five mile range. They say it's near noiseless, and it can operate in that GPS denied operation mode that we talked about earlier. No geofencing problems, obstacle avoidance up front, and cost-wise, the drone starts at around seventy-four fifty, and the controller at forty-three fifty. So you're looking at about twelve thousand dollars to start. What about use cases? Well, here again, search and rescue, military, law enforcement, building inspection, power line inspection, tower inspection, solar panel inspection, public safety worksite inspection, wildlife inspection, and I'll throw in the volcanoes again. So still the same kind of usage as the other drones we've talked about so far. Now, how does this Golden Eagle differ from the other two we've talked about? Well, let me read these to you here. For the Peridonafi, weighs one pound. For the FLIR, four pounds. Peridonafi has a 4K 32 times zoom. The FLIR has a 70, 720p 40 times zoom. And they didn't give a zoom rating on the Golden Eagle, so I'm not really sure about that. Both have the FLIR Boson thermal cameras. No laser range finder on the Parrot. There is a laser range finder on the FLIR. Both are ruggedized and IP rated. Parrot 32 minute flight time. FLIR 35 minute flight time. Flight speed, 33 miles an hour on the Parrot, and only 23 miles an hour on the FLIR. Range, 2.5 miles on the Parrot, 
1.8 miles on the FLIR. Sustained wind speeds 33 for the Parrot and 23 for the FLIR. GPS denied ops, not sure on the Parrot, but we've got day and night on the FLIR. No geofencing issues with either of them. No obstacle avoidance on the Parrot, but day and night obstacle avoidance on the FLIR, which is a big deal. And price wise, 7,000 on the Inafi and 15,000 on the FLIR. So it looks like the teal comes in slightly less. So if we're looking at a $12,000 drone, would that fit into your workflow? Well, the one thing I really like about this is the modularity aspect. If I can upgrade that thing over time and not keep rebuying drones like I do with DJI, that's a real plus in my book. I hope you're still enjoying these videos. They're still a lot of fun for me to do. If so, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And if you feel like sharing it with your friends, please do. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you've got a video that you'd like me to include in a future video of mine, please send it on and I'd be happy to include it. And as always, thank you for watching.